You're listening to Fight Jokes About Everything, a Night Shift Radio original. For more information, visit nightshiftradio.com, and thanks for subscribing. Today we're talking about the Doctor Who New Year's special. So this was Revolution of the Daleks, uh, and and a lot happened in this episode. It was a kickoff to season 13. Uh, it was Jodie Whittaker's third season. Um, it's kind of a big one. So there will be a lot of spoilers for this episode for that uh, um, episode. So if you have not watched yet, and if you're sensitive about spoilers, this is not the show to be listening to. At least, yeah, go watch the series. You know, go watch it and then come back and see it. It is streaming on demand. I think I only paid like three dollars to watch it. Um, or if you have uh, AMC Plus or BBC iPlayer, depending on your country, you're you're able to uh, watch this already. So go watch it. Or, or if you don't care about spoilers, let's kick on. So season 13 kicked off. So uh, this started with Jodie Whittaker is that uh, they and, and Chris Chibnall, who took over for um, uh, for this uh, for the show, um, is is we started to do New Year specials now. Wait, hang on. For those of you guys watching on YouTube, I did this thing. I invested in a ring light. I know I I am disgraced to myself as well, but it makes me look beautiful. Anyways, so Chris Chibnall started this brand new thing where he started doing New Year specials instead of Christmas specials. Now, obviously, for those um, old traditional fans of Doctor Who, this was a very big deal. It, it obviously caused a lot of controversy on top of the fact that um, the Doctor, for the very first time in in the series, um, it became a female. So we had the first female doctor in, in Jodie Whittaker uh, appearing on the series, which if you uh, have watched up until now, we realize that now we know that's actually not the case, is that the doctor actually originally was born, uh, potentially born female, and has uh, uh, resurrected, you know, or um, uh, regenerated multiple times. So... Uh, so, so we have a New Year's special now. This is this is the second one with Jodie Whittaker. The first one was called Resolution of the Daleks, and this is a carry on of that. So this is this uh this episode was actually a direct sequel and a direct play on of uh, Resolution of the Daleks. This is Revolution of the Daleks. Now inside this episode, there also were references to other episodes. So as an example, uh, Chris Noth's character, um, who was like the the Donald Trump esque, I think his name is John Rogers in it. Um, he comes back in the series, and what he actually actually finds is he gets a tip off from the British government, a, a woman who is trying to become prime minister. He gets a tip off that there is a Dalek casing, some brand new high end um, technology. You know, they're not really they don't know it's alien, but it, it is alien, obviously, because it's a Dalek. And uh, and so he he goes off and he, he finds this this Dalek casing. He brings it to some, you know, cool tech nerd who uh, then outfits it out and basically makes it to which is very weirdly timely, uh, given everything that happened in the year 2020 um, into basically police security drones. And it is kind of fucked up. They have, uh, excuse me, kind of messed up. Um, but they have uh, like um, like water cannons and, and they emit gas and stuff like that. It's very, very weird. Very, very uh, peculiar for Doctor Who. But anyways, so the... Um, uh, the, the, so he makes those. Now, in the meantime, if those of you remember at the end of season 12, the very last thing that happened is, uh, Jodie Whittaker's, uh, character was, was, uh, arrested by the Jadoon. Um, this is now after the whole timeless children debacle. So like she finds out about the timeless child that she is in fact, the timeless child, you know, the master is gone. The, the, um, Cybermen who were, uh, part Time Lord, which by the way, that really, really, really should have kept on as a thing. Um, I really wish that that that, uh, that that was more of a looming threat than just like a one-off episode thing. Uh, so we find out all about that, and she's been in prison for 19 years. So they make a, a very funny, uh, you know, a Star Wars reference in the beginning, and then later on she was like, shall we have a story, Doctor? Well, yes, that's a great idea, Doctor. And she begins reciting uh, Harry Potter, which is very funny. Um, so Captain Jack comes and rescues uh, the Doctor. Doctor. Now, meanwhile, back down on Earth, we see that um, uh, uh, Graham and Ryan have kind of been going about their lives and and living again and doing everything normal, um, whereas uh, uh, Yaz has been in the other TARDIS that they had, and she has just been, you know, uh, uh, Charlie Day style going crazy, connecting the red line dots to try to find the Doctor. Um, now, meanwhile, 
they find out about this Dalek thing, security footage leaks, and they find out that this this is a thing that's happening, and they're like, well, what would the doctor do? Well, obviously, the doctor would go and, and try to figure this out. So they go off and they, they try to start this. Meanwhile, Captain Jack rescues the doctor. Um, they finally all reconnect, and this is where it gets a little weird. So the doctor was in jail for 19 years. Um, you know, she travels back, and she tries to travel back in time, um, and it has been 11 months since uh, they have seen, uh, since, since the companion have seen the doctor and she tries to travel back to that exact moment um, of which she left um, but uh, it, you know uh, it the TARDIS isn't exact and it brings her 10 11 months in right in the time frame that we see so Yaz is obviously visibly upset uh, you know she even shoves the doctor and is like where were you you know Ryan uh, is kind of like and eh, this was actually good for me because now I, I, I want to like kind of go off and live my own life. Like I don't just want to be the doctor's companion anymore. And, you know, Graham is just kind of there. He's He's been living with his son, uh, living with his grandson, and they've been, you know, kind of doing their own thing. Um, So we're already starting to get the hints uh, that Ryan may be wanting to leave the group. And, you know, for those of you that have watched the episode, we do know, and again, spoiler, 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 that both Ryan and Graham do end up leaving the series. So they do end up at the end of the episode uh, deciding to um, leave the doctor and kind of go off and, and be Torchwood or something all on their own. Um, and Yaz stays. Uh, we're going to talk about Yaz and uh, um, how that's awesome, but also kind of messed up towards the end. So... So finally, you know, the doctor and everybody, they they get involved with Chris Noth and it becomes this whole ordeal and there's a bunch of Daleks and of course the other Dalek is still alive and he, you know, has been secretly building um, like a clone factory in Japan and he's going to teleport all his Daleks into the drones that they made and you know, it's a, it's a very straightforward and obvious uh, uh, plot. It's the, you know, it's the same plot we always see with the Daleks. It's always like, how can we make more Daleks? So, of course, um, the Doctor's big plan is they're going to summon other Daleks who are basically going to come down and be like, you're not real Daleks. Kill all those Daleks. And then they're like, okay, well, then we just have to deal with those ones. Uh, we'll figure it out. And they do. And they end up blowing them up. And, you know... The thing about it is this this was a fun episode. Um, you know, I, I like the New Year's specials. I do miss the whimsy of the past Christmas specials. Um, you know, the these episodes, like these, the the resolution of the Daleks and the revolution of the Daleks, both good episodes, felt like better season finales uh than they did um New Year specials. So if we look back in the past and we think of all the other um, uh, Christmas specials that they've done. And it's not necessarily that it's Christmas. It's just the, the material of it. So we look at one of the last ones, um, that happened right before, um, uh, uh, you know, Capaldi switched over to, to Whitaker's. We, we have, uh, the husbands of river song is a really great example. Um, you know, it was a very whimsical episode, but also it was a very, it was a very romantic episode because, you know, we see Capaldi and river song spend, you know, 22 years on Derillium. And that's like, you know, the moment right before she heads off to, to the library, the silence at the library thing. So like, it was a meaningful episode, but there's, you know, still kind of whimsy and, and silliness to it. You know, and, and now don't get me wrong, that is the case with Whitaker's episode, and I'm in no way saying it's bad. It was very fun. I love Whitaker as as a doctor. She she's a good mix of like Tenet and Smith. Like she's got a really good balance going on there, and I like it. Um, but there's a certain amount of whimsy that we've seen in Christmas episodes past. Uh, you know, we look at um all of the Matt Smith ones. You know, they've always, I mean, Matt Smith's character was always like, okay, let's Let's have fun. You know, and Capaldi's always been a little more serious um, and Tennant has always had a little more of the brooding aspect to him. Um, and I guess we count Eccleston. I don't know. Sometimes we don't. Um, but there's just something missing in that element. Like it doesn't feel like a special as much as it felt like the kickoff or the closure to a season. It didn't feel special. Um, uh, so that being said, again, it was a good episode. I did actually enjoy it. Um, and I did have fun watching it. I've, I've watched it twice now. Um, and, uh, uh, I liked it. I love Whitaker as, as a doctor. I, you know, it was a slow start for me. The first couple episodes, I was like, this is, this is a little awkward. Like, man, this is a lot of companion like three companions is a lot um you know 
two uh, was good. Like Amy and Rory worked because they worked. The pawns worked because they were they were almost like one. They were one companion. But this this time around, when we've got Ryan with his own thing, the dyspraxia, his his dad issues. You know, we've got Graham with the loss of his wife and the impending cancer. We've got Yaz with the like trying to find herself and and prove herself. There was just a lot going on individually with all the characters that that made things seem very stretched. And then on top of that. You have a brand new doctor who is uh, a different gender for the very first time in the series, and it was tough. You know, there was just so much going on that it was really hard to latch onto one character. And I have to say, as much as I love Graham, uh, Graham was probably one of uh, like my second favorite uh, companion um, of the season of of the three. Um, Yaz is my absolute favorite, and I'm really glad that Yaz stayed. Um, so, you know, like I said. The episode goes on. We see a lot of uh, instances of Yaz like taking charge and like doing what the doctor would do. And we see Ryan and Graham kind of being a little more apprehensive and being like, oh, I guess we're the people that do that. Ryan even goes a little off character and does some things that I thought were really weird. But, you know, it happens. Um, and so in the very end, Ryan and Graham, are, you know, Ryan's like, hey, like, I, I want to go off and do my own thing. Like my mates need me, you know, and I, I kind of want to like build myself. And, you know, Graham obviously decides to go with him because he's like, Hey man, like this is my grandson. We're finally starting to get on. And, you know, I really, I really want to like see him grow. I want to see that as long as, you know, for the rest of the time I'm alive. Not that Graham's that old. Like I think he's only in his sixties. So he's not even that old. Um, so they leave, but then they decide that they're going to go off and do Torchwood things. I don't know. They're going to go off and do earthly doctor things, which I think would be really cool as a spinoff series. I'm not going to lie. I think I would really like that. Yaz stays, and that's awesome. I think just the yeah, just Yaz and the Doctor would be such an amazing first season. Even if they only did a few episodes of just Yaz and the Doctor, I think their dynamic is really great. They've been teasing a lot with them throughout the seasons. Um, you know, there's been a couple of references of some sort of romantic interest. Like uh, somebody said, like, um, "Oh, is this who you're dating?" And she was like, you know, the doctor was like, yes, and I aren't dating. Wait, yes, are we dating? And she was like, no. She's like, oh, huh. well, no, I guess we're not dating. Um, and that was really cute. And I like that. And there doesn't always have to be a romantic interest in Doctor Who. In fact, I think it's even better when there isn't. You know, um, Martha, Martha Jones is a great example of a character that... Um, that was held back by her love for the doctor when she could have just been badass Martha Jones. Instead, she ended up being Martha Jones who was pining after the doctor. And it got a little weird and and stuff, and it was kind of a bummer. But, you know, all in all, uh, it worked out. But we got introduced to a brand new uh, uh, companion. So at the at the close of the episode, after the com uh, after the after um, the credits, we see that we have a brand new companion that's going to go by the name of John Bishop. Um, so John Bishop, the, the person that plays him is actually... Uh, um, a comedian. I don't remember his name right now. I'm really bad. I didn't do the research in advance. Um, but he, he's he's a comedian, um, and he's you know he's been in a few things. He's he's kind of somewhat famous around uh, uh, English uh, viewing, uh, Britain viewing, and stuff. So so people are familiar with him, and I think it's very interesting that they're adding him. I'm very curious to see how they're adding him. Um, but I guess we'll see once season 13 airs, which is uh, said to be some point during 2021. Um, they are still filming it right now. Obviously, COVID. Um, um, slowed that process down and, and caused a lot of things to go weird, but they have promised that the season will release this year. My guess is sometime around the summer. Um, so there you have it, guys, the Doctor Who Revolution of the Daleks New Year special. Um, thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for subscribing if you haven't already. If you want, um, if there's a topic you think I should talk about, tag me on Twitter at the Michael Fight. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Michael Fight. And of course, uh, if you want more information, you can go to nightshiftradio.com. Thanks a lot for joining me, everyone, and we will see you next episode.